When I was a teenager, my buddies and I would party on the weekends, and we were always on the lookout for epic parties. And when I was 16 or 17, one of us had the idea that if we went to the Gorge and George, uh, which is an amphitheater and a concert venue in eastern Washington, if we went there when there was concerts going on, we wouldn't have to go to the concerts because we couldn't afford it, but we could probably stumble into an epic party somewhere around there. And we were 100% correct. And this is a story about one of those times. So we head up there on a Friday night, and before we even get to the venue, we see lines of cars just parked along the roads with people milling about. Uh, and we pull off to the side because one of my buddies has to take a leak. And as we're there, we can hear people talking about how there's no more camping left at the venue and how they're going to go to a place called Getty's Cove, which is a couple miles back. So we're like, we will also go to this place. So we get there, uh, and it is exactly the type of madhouse that we're looking for. Like, it's a campsite, but it also has vendors. It's got a very, like, this is the overflow of the concert type feel. Uh, and this place is fucking packed. And we get one of the last campsites there. We pull in, we start getting our tents and stuff set up, and people all around us are getting rowdy. So we pregame for a bit, uh, and then I pull out what I think is probably one of my crowning achievements as a teenager, which is a gravity-assisted drinking device, which typically they consist of a funnel and a tube, but mine had a valve at the bottom to make things better. And I'd also spend a considerable amount of time tuning the diameter of the tube because if it's too skinny, there's not enough volume. If it's too wide, everything foams up and it makes the experience not ideal. So this thing is primed and ready to go. So I throw it over my shoulders, I start walking around the campsites, advertising its availability to the public to see if anybody would like to partake. And they did. It was a hit immediately. Uh, it turns out a lot of people didn't think to bring one of these and they were very happy about the service I was providing and they offered me booze and compensation, which I graciously accepted. So I ended up doing that for hours. I hit 10, 15 different campsites. Uh, at a certain point, I lost track of my buddies. I ended up at this like day-use picnic site with a girl, her friend, and another guy. Uh, and this is kind of like the southern edge of Getty's Cove, where behind it is just a bunch of haggard-ass back roads. And as we're sitting there, this Jeep that has no doors, no top, and a billion lights on the front of it comes flying in and skirts to a stop about 20 feet past us. Now, in the front passenger seat is one of my buddies. And we didn't come in a Jeep. We don't know anybody that has a Jeep. So apparently he fell in with a crew of people that have a Jeep. <laughs> and he looks back at me. He's like, get in, man. We're rallying this bitch. I look at the people that I'm hanging out with. And they're like, so we get in the back of this thing. So we get in the very back of this thing. Like my legs are hanging over the tailgate. We're packed in there like sardines. And as soon as our asses hit the floor, this dude takes the fuck off. And before we even get a quarter mile down the road, we hit something that kicks the back of the Jeep up. And it throws all of us out of the back. Now, the Jeeps have this like triangular bar in the back, and at the apex of my launch, I was able to grab the bar and pull myself back in. Nobody else was able to do that. So I remember as I'm landing, I can see from the glare of the taillights all three of the people that I was hanging out with, and specifically the girl that I was hanging out with, like, hit the ground, roll, and then fade off into the night. Now, I spent probably the next minute or so trying to get myself in a configuration where I wasn't getting thrown around in the back of that thing. And by the time I finally turned around and got to the point where I could yell at the people in the front, I couldn't get anybody's attention. The dude in the front was blaring country music, my buddy's in the passenger seat, losing his damn mind. Uh, and at a certain point, I'm just like, well, I guess I'm in this chapter of the story now. And I don't remember much else about that night, TBH. Uh, I do remember the next morning I woke up on my back, on a picnic table, about five minutes away from my campsite, nary a Jeep in sight, uh, ready for round two.